Carving the Maxillary Central Incisor Step 1. Drawing and carving the labial surface. First, we prepare a block of wax or soap in specific dimensions. Then we prepare the plaster knife, wax knife, lacron carver, and ruler, and a marking pen. We should draw the labial surface of this maxillary central incisor on the buccal surface of the block. We should name the surfaces of the block not to get mixed up. This is the buccal, this is the distal, palatal, and mesial. Now we bring the ruler and mark the dimensions of the crown as in the following diagram. This is the shape of the central incisor. We draw the midline that divides the crown into equal halves and the tip of the root will be about one millimeter away distally from the midline. The length of the crown is 10.5 millimeters while the length of the root is 13 millimeters. This point is the peak of curvature distally which is between the incisal and middle third of the crown. This is the mesial peak of curvature, which is very close to the incisal edge. It is about 1.5 millimeters away from the incisal edge while the distal is 3.5 millimeters away from the incisal edge. The distance or width of the crown from these two points is 8.5 millimeters. Therefore, it's 4.25 millimeters from the mesial peak of curvature to the midline and 4.25 millimeters from the distal point peak of curvature to the midline. At the cervical area the width of the crown is 7 millimeters. So at this area which is the deepest point of the cervical line curve distally to the midline is 3.5 millimeters. It is also 2 millimeters below the height of the crown from the cervical line. The mesial point is also 3.5 millimeters away from the midline, but the mesial point is below the distal point by 1 millimeter, therefore making it 3 millimeters away from the height of the crown cervically.
Now we connect the dots and draw the labial aspect of the maxillary central incisor. and about a third of the root. These areas should be removed, but it is wise not to remove it to the drawing and leaving a little bit of soap so it will be removed when we finish the carving. We bring the plaster knife and carefully and slowly remove the soap. As you can see here removing it is just like shaving you take a little bit of the soap each time not taking a lot of the soap because it may end up in fracturing the whole block these areas should be removed. Finally, you could see the cutting. These sides are parallel and the palatal surface is exactly like the buccal surface. Step 2. Drawing and carving the mesial surface. After obtaining this block, we draw a line on the mesial surface bisecting the block into two equal halves. The line here will penetrate the tip of the root and the incisal edge. The point or peak of curvature labially is 8 millimeters away from the incisal edge. While the peak of curvature at the cingulum is 9 mm away from the incisal edge. The width of the crown at these points is 7 mm, therefore it is 3.5 mm from the cingulum and 3.5 mm from the labial to the midline. The width of the root is 6 millimeters. The slope of the incisal edge ends about 1.5 millimeters lingually, while the end of the cingulum ends at 6.5 millimeters from the incisal edge and in between these two points a concavity is shown. Now after drawing the mesial surface on the block we bring the plaster knife and cut the excess as we done on the labial surface. 